everyone, and welcome to Fluid Health and Fitness, your functional solution for all things movement. My name is Ryan Maxwell. Today we're going to talk to you about lateral knee pain and specifically iliotibial band syndrome. This has to do with a disproportionate wear and tear of the IT band on the lateral condyle of your femur on the side of the knee. A lot of times this has to do with the shortening of the IT band by way of the TFL muscle, it's the muscle on the front of the hip. Again, it's a flexor and an abductor. That muscle can be tight, and so we have a hard time getting our leg back into hip extension. And again, what that can do is it can carry that IT band disproportionately over the lateral edge of the femur, create some irritation down there. So we're going to show you a functional solution today in, in rebalancing your hip position, make sure that we address the immobilities that are present at the hip, and give you some specific strength exercises you can use to improve the track of your not only your knee, the IT band over the femur, but where your hip position is in space when you're going through your stance phase of your gait cycle. If you have any questions on today's topic, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And as usual, we do offer everyone a free movement analysis so we can take a big view of what your body's experiencing and give you some maybe some practical guidance above and beyond the information that you're going to receive on today's video. So with that in mind, let's get into it and we'll get started. All right, first we want to talk a little bit about the anatomy and what could be going on here in your body biomechanically. Oftentimes the body has an asymmetry because we have a dominant leg and that will show up as a functional leg length discrepancy where the hike side will hike up and shift over to one hemisphere and the opposite side will drop down. Now it's the drop down side that we're worried about today. If we look at the side or the symmetry of what's going on here, we've got a couple lateral mechanisms that hold the pelvis neutral, and two of the big ones are the IT band, the TFL, and the glute medius. Because remember, the glute med attaches from the hip to the greater trochanter of the femur. TFL attaches, again, from the hip bone to the IT band down to the tip. So we can see, again, if our hip is hiked up on the one hemisphere, and we're demonstrating this on the right, there's going to be a lengthening of the TFL down to the IT band, and again, the glute medius there as well. On the drop side, we're going to see a compression. So we'll see the TFL compressed on that left side, and also the glute medius. Now again, if that's going on, that's going to reduce the ability of that muscle to lengthen and can potentially imp er, impact the body's ability to get the leg behind you into hip extension. That means that the IT band is going to be disproportionately pulled forward on the femur, and that again could potentially create some issues down at that femoral condyle. So normally on that hike side though, or that drop side, we also know that the leg has to move forward when you're trying to bring your center of gravity forward as you're trying to swing your leg forward in your gait cycle. And again, if you can't get your hip around because that hip is dragged down by that TFL IT band, again, we can see an overreaching of the leg, hyperextension at that knee, and a reduced knee flexion on heel strike for ground strike. Now again, when that goes on, we're going to see a disproportionate tug on that IT band as it rolls again over the femur, and again, restriction and hip extension as the leg goes back further dragging it over that femoral head. So today what we want to do is reduce the TFL, get that to relax, improve the strength of the adductors that pull that femur back into alignment and the pelvis on top of the femur so that the actual socket is more in alignment so that we have better femoral acetabular glide. And then we'll work on that glute or the lateral rotators, the hip external rotators to make sure that that doesn't go on again. We can keep that hip based where it belongs and start to lengthen through those hip flexors. So again, that's the orientation for today. That's the anatomy. First thing we're gonna need to do is get after that TFL and relax that. So let's get to it. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is reduce the TFL muscle. This is the tensor fascia lata. Remember the muscle attaches from the hip bone to the IT band. And again, if the hip has a tendency to be dropped over to your hike side, the drop side is going to be more adducted instead of abducted and more externally rotated. So we're going to have to make up the difference with our leg coming around. And that again has a tendency to make that muscle overreactive. So what we want to do is again to give you a quick way of assessing for that. So this is called an over test. We would lay on our side. What you can do is again level set your hips by stacking them even, the AS to AS on both the right and left hemisphere. And again, you would bend the knee, draw the leg backward, and then adduct the leg towards the, the table or to the floor. And if you do that and the hip drops down with the leg, that's a, a positive indicator 
that that muscle uh, needs to be lengthened. So I'm going to stay on my right side here. We're going to be targeting the left hemisphere, and I'm going to bring my legs up into flexion. Today I'm going to use the Bolster 3 massage gun. This is the gun that we prefer to use here at Fluid. And we're going to use this to create a neural inhibition of the muscle before we go in and use a ball to help break down some of these collagens. So first thing you're going to do is set the gun to a level three, and I'm using the flat round head here today. If you guys have this from home, notice again, we have a little link here at the top. If you need to get one, you can just order one from us if you're interested in using the gun. What you would do is just grab the gun and we're going to trace the muscle. Remember where it starts at the ASIS, it's more towards the front outer edge of the hip, and it comes down inferiorly where it attaches at the ID band and then you can trace the line of that tissue. Now remember this is an external lateral hip flexor, so it brings the leg up into flexion, brings the leg outward away from the middle line of the body, and it internally rotates the femur. So again, I'm just going at one inch per second up and down the length of the muscle. We're trying to pre-inhibit it, so we're trying to get the pain response out of the tissue, get it to relax a little bit. As I'm doing this, I'm also searching for little tender points, a little focalized densities of tissue, so when I go back after this first sweep, I can isolate those areas and create more inhibition. So we only do that for about a minute. We'll turn this guy off. Now I'm gonna set it to a level two, so a lower vibration, same flat round head. Now I'm gonna go back to the little tender points that I felt while I was exploring. And on the second pass, what we're gonna do is isolate the area. We're not using a lot of pressure. Again, the stimulation of the vibration to the tissue is gonna make it clench a little bit. What we're hoping to do is get the tendon to override this muscle function and get it to soften and relax. So again, very little pressure is needed, and we're just going to isolate it. So a couple qualities that you're looking for. If it's sensitive, the muscle should start to desensitize and, and calm down. Then you're going to feel that stiffness in the muscle start to relax and it'll soften. Then eventually what you're going to feel is a warmth, so it'll go from cold to warm or cool to warm. It might here it actually vibrated a lower base of your tone as the head goes deeper into the tissue. And if you're struggling with it, getting it to relax, a couple key points, you could use a larger head, you could prop the leg up and, and shorten the muscle um, by putting some pillows between your legs like this. Or again, you could use less pressure by lifting the gun off the, the head of the tissue there. Um, and all of which could help to make that relax a little bit quicker. So as we're sitting here, it normally should take about a minute or so to get it to relax and start to feel that warm sensation. And when you're done, again, with that warmth, you got about 20, 30 seconds to let it sit on there, and then you can move on to the, the pin and stretch, which we're gonna do here in just a second. Now that you're done with your vibration release, what you're gonna do is use a lacrosse ball, and we're gonna do a pin and stretch technique. This is a simple technique. What we're basically doing is laying on the ball on that TFL. We're gonna use pressure again to relax the neural impulse just lay it there until it relaxes and then we're going to move through the tissue bed by bringing the leg back into extension and adduction. Okay, so I'm going to lay on my left side. Start off by identifying the muscle again, find the ASIS, the hip bone, go down about an inch and then over about an inch. Remember where we showed you with that up close. And I'm going to push off my opposite leg and rotate my weight onto the ball. I like the lacrosse ball because it's rubbery and viscous so it's not going to roll around. Again, a tennis ball is kind of soft, and again, it's slick, so sometimes it'll kind of jettison out. So this is nice, it'll pin down. And again, my leg is slightly flexed and abducted, so it's soft because the muscle's flexed into a, a compressed state. And then I'm really just using my back leg to push my center of gravity onto the ball until I feel it pressed down. Now again, as it pushes into the tissue, I'm not overpressing to the point of pain, so I'm just kind of just putting just a little bit so I can feel the slack move out of the muscle. And I'm just relaxing there. As I sit here, again, if it's enough pressure, the muscle should start to, again, calm down. The stretch reflex is going to subside. The neural stiffness is going to calm down. And then it'll sink in a little bit. Once I feel that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contract my abdominals to support my pelvis. And I'm going to bring my leg back until I feel that first barrier for stretch as I extend the leg. Now, as I get to that point, I'm going to hold it there. Once again, we're going to get a bit of a stretch reflex from the muscle, so I'm waiting for that to calm down. And what you'll feel is the tensioning of the muscle subside and the ball will sink right back into the tissue again. At that point, you can hold the abdominals again and bring that leg back further, maybe even adduct it just a bit. Now while I'm in here, I want to do a couple more things. 
I've got my TFL here on the front side, but I might also hit the glute medius. That's also a muscle that has a tendency to be adaptively shortened. So I'm gonna just bring that ball back just a little bit further back on the hip, right above the trochanter. In the same position, abduct the leg, keep it in a slight flexed position. And then I'm gonna sink down into that ball by pushing off the opposite hemisphere and just hold the pressure on the glute medius. Might get a little bit in the minimus underneath of it there as well. And it's the same action. This time again, I'm gonna wait for it to inhibit. We're assuming that that happened. And then I'm going to draw the leg into adduction, bring the leg up, back in towards the midline of the body. So again, this relationship that we're targeting today has to do with the placement of the acetabulum or the socket of the hip, and the inability of the mechanics of the pelvis to move forward of its center of gravity when you're about to load except on that leg, and has a tendency to make that leg overreach, and that can create that wear and tear cycle at the lateral condyle of the femur. So trying to reduce that relationship at the pelvis. So the glute med's also involved in that. So again, you would pull it into adduction, hit that glute med stretch, wait there, wait for it to soften, the ball sink into the tissue, and then draw the leg back up a little bit further. And again, you're going in through that pin and stretch technique or passive to active stretch, uh, using the ball to help to break down some of those collagens. So that's all you need for mobil mobilization of the hip on the lateral side. That hopefully should allow you to get that hip back on on top of the femur, adduct the leg inward, abduct the hip over, and bring it in more internal. Okay, so you can get your center of gravity back on that hip. And now we want to work the muscles that also help to do that. And that's why we're going to work the back groin muscle and the glute. So let's get right to it. Okay, guys, so I'm on my left side here, and now we're going to target the adductor magnus. Remember, you have five different groin muscles, some short ones on the front of your hip that attach the femur to the pubic bone, and then you got some back ones that attach the femur up to the, the tibia or the ischial tuberosity, the sit bone. The ones that we're targeting or targeting today are the ischial tuberosity ones, these back guys, and namely that's going to be primarily adductor magnus and gracilis. Okay, so you've got pecaneus, brevis, longus, magnus, and gracilis. We're doing magnus. Now, in order to target it, what you're going to do is lay in a side lying position with the opposite leg on top. Remember, the affected side today is the left side. I'm going to stabilize my spine. We're going to mimic what would be considered compressional mechanics as if the weight is loaded on the leg on the left side and we're going to hold that leg back into extension by kicking the leg back and then draw it up to the ceiling now again the goal here is what that when we lift that leg up that tethering or tensioning of the tfl and the it band doesn't drag the hip down or behind you so that you get an outflare of the hip so again we're using the abdominals to hold the hip stable we're going to clinch the glute on the same side, give it a good breathe in to get some bracing and true abdominal pressure, and then lift the leg up until you feel that first barrier for stretch at the TFL glute med and IT band. So again, you can see how that relationship plays into that dragging potentially on the lateral femoral condyle. And again, we would do this for about 20 repetitions. So I'm crunching, inhaling, squeezing my glute on the left side, supporting the pelvis, and then lifting the leg from the ground, adducting it towards the ceiling, and extending it behind me so I get extension and adduction, and then slowly bringing it down as you breathe out to a count of six, and again, actively controlling the abdominals as the leg comes back down. Try your best to keep it off the ground the whole time so you're tensioning that muscle, and really where we're gonna get the impact from this exercise is the slow opening of the muscle, so coming down from the ceiling, and again, what we're shooting for is more hip extension, more internal hip rotation while that hip socket's stable, and more adduction of the leg inside. And again, it's all about the positioning of the hip on top of the femur, so we get better knee glide and better hip mechanics when we're walking, especially when load is applied to that leg. So again, you would do two sets of 20 repetitions, give yourself a minute of time in between, and make sure that time under tension is two seconds up and six seconds down as you come down and that should be good. Let's get back to the glute now. All right guys, now that we've done the release of the TFL and the glute med, we activated the adductor. We wanna start working on the muscles that bring the leg behind us and help to track the pelvis in the right orientation. So let's go on the table, you're gonna lay down. Now again, as I'm laying here, I'm gonna showcase this because I have a mic on so I don't wanna really squish it, but what I would do is normally lay down flat, 
more prone, tuck your chin, keep your back somewhat stable. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate into the left side. We're gonna showcase this left side today. Crunch inward on that left side, brace the hip by squeezing the glute, support the other pelvis on the right side by pushing the right knee into the table, and then extend the leg behind you. Now you'll notice I'm not moving pretty much at all. I'm basically holding the hip stable and only allowing the leg to move within the socket without it dragging the socket back with it. Again, that's a reflection of a movement imbalance if you see that accessory hypermotion and that the hip flexors and the TFL are too tight. So again, as I'm laying here, I'm gonna go and crunch and hold my abdominal stable, breathe in, pre-contract the glute, and then lift the hip up as far as I can without letting the hip bone rotate back externally. That's how you're gonna do a hip extension. The truth of this is that the burning or the fatigue should set in on the glute where we work those lateral rotators to help to stabilize the pelvis and again stabilize the femur as the legs going through its gait cycle especially on the stance side when weight's being accepted on it we want to make sure that that's efficient as a quick recap remember that we did relax the tfl and hip flexor with this vibration release we used a lacrosse ball to relax and pin and stretch the muscle we went into an isolated sideline hip adduction to increase the strength of the adductors and specifically the adductor magnus. You would do two sets of 20 repetitions, about four minutes of total time under tension. And then we did a hip extension and we would do that again for another two minutes of time under tension. Remember that the body is an integrated system so everything moves together and there are specific patterns and sequences that you wanna learn. And we wanna show those or share those with you guys. So if you have any questions, make sure to reach out. Thank you for joining us today for this episode on lateral knee pain and iliotibial band syndrome. Remember your body is designed to move, so stay in motion and we'll see you next time.